flexibly to express one's thinking and to understand others. So a person uh, who are high on this intelligence can artic articulate, mm -hmm. can create and has, uh, are very sensitive to different sets of word meanings. Examples of these, uh, next slide please. Next type of intelligence is uh, logical or mathematical. They are also known as uh, number smart. So, in this type of intelligence, persons will have the capacity to think logically and critically. They also engage in abstract reasoning and can manipulate symbols to solve mathematical problems. Examples of this uh, intelligence include scientists and Nobel Prize example, Isaac Newton. Next slide, please. Next intelligence, third one is spatial. It refers to the spot, uh, if he can spot a person's face in from the crowd very quickly, then that is also a type of intelligence. Only the intelligence does not mean only the book, bookies things. So <coughs> we wanted that there should be multiple intelligence so that we can judge the people very fairly. This is the this is the thinking, this is the logic behind the multiple intelligence. So we should understand to, we should try to understand our list, our learners, our students to find out the intelligence between, uh, among them. So that's why, uh, and that way we can judge the students very properly, effectively, and we can give our classroom discourse very properly. That's the main team of this man. Uh, uh, objectives of the gardeners, nine intelligence, multiple intelligence. Yes, sir. Good morning, sir. Today we are going to present uh, about the uh, the seminar on lab Vygotsky theory and its application in the classroom. So I am representing group number five. The social cultural theory, or we call it a cognitive theory. He was born in 1986 and died in 1934 and he lived for 30 only 37 years and he had done so many uh, uh, he had written 270 scientific articles and he okay, next. so this is about the theory of uh, social cultural theory or a cognitive theory so this theory talks about the cognitive means thinking or reason thinking reasoning problem solving especially it is overall and here it is a theory like a process of learning or instruction of the child can go uh, uh, through the social interaction learning it uh, like social learning will develop uh, like develop uh, only uh, not only develop the cognitivism but also social cultural can be developed in the uh, in social environment and here three aspects so three aspects, main aspects of this theory is that culture, language, then uh, it's a social interaction. And this so that here, this so uh, next culture, uh, social uh, language and culture can be it can uh, we can draw this uh, concept, this aspect from the social interaction. Language as well as culture can be obtained from the social interaction of the child. When the child uh, uh, socialize himself in the process of learning in the society. Then here other important aspects are what we call uh, this zone of proximal development, ZPD, and then uh, more uh, knowledgeable others, MKO and scaffolding. Here, ZPD especially like it's a, next, uh, you just, yes, zone of proximal development, it is a first, uh, let's, Okay, we'll just from this uh, chart. So the first here, learners can learn full people. I mean, the skilled person from the skilled skilled person, the child can learn, and after that, after learning, uh, like aided by the MKO, more knowledgeable than other, the uh, more intelligent person, even among the child from the children, 
and uh, well, from the teacher as well, more knowledgeable, uh, more knowledgeable person or uh, other can help the child. And then at the last, the child, the learners can do independent. The child, uh, and then uh, here in the uh, one a scaffolding, like teacher becomes a facilitator. That's the scaffolding for uh, the teacher will help in the fac uh, in facilitating the child after learning the concept. Okay, next. Okay, next. Yeah. Here we from this bicycle. Here, uh, the first the child cannot learn by herself, but uh, through the member of the uh, like other skillful person, the child can learn. It includes not only uh, not only the like uh, yes, it includes everything here. Social culture theory we can see from this. Next, you. Okay. Yeah. Next. Okay. Here. Next time after the child learn from the uh, from the skillful person. From the more knowledgeable person, then the child can ride the bicycle. This is an example of it. And next, okay. Now let's come to skip up to the educational implication. Uh, help us to know uh, the different uh, ability person in the uh, different able uh, different abilities learners are there. Like some different learners are there in the classroom. The child, uh, this we can apply in the classroom. That uh, not all not all the learners are having the same IQ. Uh, the different different learners are there, and also more ad advanced peers. Uh, some more advanced uh, among our learners, also some uh, learners, advanced learners are there. They become uh, they, they take the role of JPD. Then next, uh, it, this theories it's a reciprocal teaching where the uh, after summarizing is there. Summarizing after that questioning is there, and after the questioning there will be again another step like uh, among the teacher and. The teacher and the students, as well as the learner among the, uh, themselves, there will be reciprocal learning. Okay, next. Then this it will help. Uh, uh, like collaborative learning is very important. Like uh, okay, it is not included. The other day we have sir uh, another one teacher class. Then uh, one with one friend of mine, Miss Narik Mari, we were uh, on the traveling, and then when we were discussing something about the topic, that through discussion we are able to write the exam very well. Oh, that's another that where collaborative learning is very important and this theoretical uh, I mean this theory help us to do that and then here uh, recent uh, technologies of course uh, this jet PD and then MKO can be true technological also so nowadays technology is very high so uh, a recent technological advancement it will help in this cognitive uh, theory next okay now teachers role so teacher, it will uh, reciprocal teaching, summarizing, questioning, clarifying, prediction, it is predicting. The teacher will collaborate all these types of uh, learning, and the teacher uh, will not take over time, but just uh, teacher will process. In the process of learning, teacher will become a pro uh, facilitator. Then next, teacher will uh, take like uh, like classroom from the. Uh, the develop resources to establish a classroom culture and norms through interaction. Without interaction, learning cannot process. Only teacher teaching the only topic will not help in any learning process. Of course, it will help up to thirty percent, but seventy percent it uh, uh, it can be learning can be success through teacher and student interaction and student student interaction. So teacher will take the half of this, this teacher role. Then next teacher it becomes a guide, then support and encourage the student, children. And also, a uh, teacher becomes a uh, mediation, mediating the child learning activity. And then uh, the last conclusion. So uh, this psychologies help the child to. Uh, this psychologies uh, emphasizes that the child can learn uh, this uh, in his or her environment, social environment. The child will not. Uh, child is not a. A single entity that the child will not learn alone, but through the social environment, the child will. Like other experiment, uh, what we call like uh, Skinner and other operant conditioning, so many mistakes, errors are done. But in case of this, uh, this theory, the Gottsky theory, it's believed that developing theories are there instead of constant uh, conducting experiment. This developing theories are developed here, and also if there are the concepts that. The child, uh, uh, the, in this concept, this theory, it explains the process. This theory, uh, it uh, it has explained like I have already, we have already shown in the graph that the process of the child uh, by step by step the child can learn. So this theory has uh, clearly shown the picture of it. And then uh, the learning outcome of the child, it can be better understood from this theory. The theory, theory this Vygotsky theory will help us in knowing, uh, help us to. Uh, know more about the learning outcome of the child and next 
because the, uh, this about the social cultural theory of human learning human learning will take place only in the human society not in other things so this uh, this theory this theory help us uh, to understand that and it help us to visualize or cognitive uh, co uh, it help us to know about the learning that learning will take place with the uh, with, uh, uh, with the social environment and only when there is social environment when there is a social interaction when there is a, uh, a MKO, when there is a, a, a proper guide, the best nature, nature teacher, then we can only have a constructive learning and our outcome of learning will be successful. Thank you everyone. Our group to presentations. And first of all, let me thank you all for coming here for today. Now, our topic that is, as you see on the screen, it is the Skinner theory and its applications in the classroom. Now, <coughs> next slide please. Now, first of all, let's try to know about some and social uh, psychology. And he was at, at the universities of Harvard from the 1952 till 1974. Now, Skinner is regarded as the father of operant conditioning, but bears on the fed, uh, from depth the law of effect. Now, according to the Frederick Skinner, the actions is followed by good outcome are likely to reoccur. And the actions followed by the bad outcome are left likely to reoccur. <coughs> and uh, Skinner called his approach as a operant conditioning and instrumentum conditioning. And the next slide please. Now on this picture, the Skinner study his operant conditioning by conducting experiments using an element which he placed in a box called Skinner box. As you see on the Skinner, uh, as you see on the screen, this is the picture of the Skinner box that experiment then done on the rest. The next slide, please. Now, Skinner introduced a new term, the court law of effect, which is known as the reinforcement. According to reinforcement, <coughs> behavior which is reinforced is likely to be repeated. And the behavior which is not reinforced are likely to die out or to be extinguished. And the behavior which is punished will occur less frequently. And as Skinner identified the three types of offering or three types of response. The first one is the nutrient offering. The nutrient offering, the behavior which is the come from the environment that neither increase or decrease the behavior, neither increase or decrease the probability of the behavior. And the second one is the reinforcer. Reinforcer, the response from the environment that increase the probability of behavior. It can be neither it can be either positive or negative. In the positive in the stimulus to increase the behavior that is giving as so as to accept extra classes if the students perform one in the exam. The third one is the furniture. That it means decrease the probability of the behavior. It, it can also be either positive or negative. In the positive punishment, at unpleasant stimulus to decrease the behavior, it is giving the punishment for not doing the homework. In the negative punishment, removing pleasant stimulus to decrease the behavior, it is not giving great time to play for not doing the homework. Now, it applications in the classroom. Developing motivations by giving prize or grades appreciations. And the secondly, proper use of positive and negative pressure as reinforced act. And the thirdly, the immediate reinforcement as immediate prize rewards can be stronger reinforcer or motivator than the grades giving much later. 
and formal conditioning individuals and classroom behavior. The lastly, reinforcing desired behavior and decreasing the undesirable behavior in the classroom. Group number four, and uh, Mr. Expense about the Cloud Brothers Cherry. Cloud well, Rogers, he was <clears throat> was born on uh, January 8, 1902, and from U.S. Cop Park, and he died February 4, 1987, and he lived on this earth 85 years. <clears throat> he was from American nationality, and then he is uh, uh, he worked on psychology, and he is a uh, a psychologist and he studied in many universities like uh, Wisconsin's Madison Teachers College, Columbia University, and <clears throat> he worked on the, for the person center approach that is client center therapy, student center learnings, Rogers arguments. Next. And in this, the first paradox is that when I accept myself just as I am, then I can change. He is a very positive man, and what he says to us that when I can accept myself as I am, then I can change, which is very uh, meaningful to us. And next, nothing in the world is bigger than a people. He says that. I repeat again, nothing in the world is bigger than a people. Next. Then he says that humanistic psychology cross Rogers Rogers theory of personality. He he keep on deals with the personality. How the personality, how a man, how a person has built up with the personality and the positive things. Like organismic value process, he innate internal guidance system that a person can use to stay on the track your self actualization and then he said that need for positive regards and then next conditions of work and the next unconditional positive regard and then next he says that fully functioning person and next he says that concurrent persons which are based on the, the positive attitudes or positive uh, response towards the people and then uh, and then before that he says that he has given the uh, theory like uh, in concurrence and concurrence let me e explain in this little bit idle shelf and shell image idle shelf what is to earn one is in concurrence one is concurrence right so in this uh, in concurrence what what is talk about in concurrence? He says that the shell image is different to the idle shell. There is only a little overlap. This, this part. And then their self adulations will be difficult when it comes to the deal with the people. He says that it will be a little difficult comparing to the concurrence. And this is the uh, overlap is more. Yeah? The shell image is similar to the idle shell, but there is more of an overlap. This person can self actualize. Okay? So, in this, in this, I will give a time to the actor, madam. You want to respect? <coughs> self concept theory of the car border. Self concept theory is open for the car border. ตอนเสียเทอรีสเอาเป็นโทนะใครโดยเกย์ให้นักใครโดยแกให้มันตั้งดาเมทริลเสียบไปบ้างเนี่ยอินทราพาร์ทิลเสียบไปบ้างเน
Okay, and then here what he says that the kids has to be the other positive people has to give inquiries to the kids, to the to the children. Okay? And the next and then here he talk about the six points. Okay, six points he emphasizes on that regarding about the client and then a psychological counselor. Okay, where the uh, concurrence and inconcurrence he deals about that with the clients and uh, 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 counselor. Counselor is the concurrence and then client is a uh, inconcurrence. Okay, next. And he also deals again here about the the, the, the same concept only with the re, uh, reference to the the claims and uh, counselor okay next here are the applications about the students the positive impact in the classrooms where it has to be deal with the regarding about the, uh, the the working in the classrooms which is the if the positive attitude then the students can learn effectively all right and then at the same time like parent work together we work together we discuss in details and then bring out these slides and all so thank you thank you very much for your time thank you well we are the group three presenters and our all of us are from 100 e to 122 and our presentation is on the topic Piaget's theory and its application in classroom. Before we go straight, straight to the cognitive development theory, let's get to know something about Piaget. Well, he is a Swiss psychologist. He was born on August 9, 1896 in Switzerland, wow. second heaven. And he died after attaining the age of 84 in the year 1980. And his parents were Arthur Piaget and he received his PhD from the University of Nashville in 1918. And he married to Valentine Shapley in 1923. And they were blessed with three children, namely Jacqueline, Lucia, and Lauren. And whose intellectual development from infancy to language was studied by the old father. To understand what is cognitive development, let's uh, get to know first about the term cognition. The term cognition is derived from the Latin word cognitio, which means to know or to recognize or to conceptualize. Hence, the term cognitive development refers to the process of growth and change in intellectual or mental abilities such as reasoning. That is all about cognitive development. Next slide. Well, to develop this uh, post Jean Piaget used for he concept Jean Piaget used four concepts which we are very much familiar with. They are schema, accommodation, assimilation, and equilibration. So I don't have to explain more about those, those yes. steps, right? You all are aware of that. Let's get straight away to the point. The first stage is called the sensory motor stage, which begins right from birth till you attain, till the child attains the age of two years. Sensory motor stage, in this stage, the babies develop the first schemas by using the senses, the five senses. They want to test, they want to hear, they want to smell, they and, 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 and one of the essential elements of this stage is object permanence. And to understand a little bit more about object permanence, I would like to tell an example. Suppose a child is sitting on a table and you keep a soft toy in front of your child. 
and then suddenly you take away the software from the child. However, the child keeps looking for the software. So this is the stage where the where the child has developed their sensory motor stage. I hope you all understand the sensory motor stage. Yes. Okay, let's get to the next point. Next point is the pre-operational stage. This stage begins from two to three years and it, it goes till seven years. So here the child learns to talk, pretend play. Pretend play means the child wants to wants to act like a doctor. In the ch in the children that is between two to seven years, it's quite an innocent egocentric, which means they have the inability to see and understand other people's viewpoint. Viewpoint that is the egocentric of these <coughs> children that is between two to seven years old, and they are not yet capable of conservation or mental manipulation of objects. For instance, to give you all the assets, okay, and then you. You fill in, you pour the same amount of water in the two glasses and you, you keep it on the table and you put the same amount of water that is in the glass. And then you ask the child who is between two to seven years old, that which glass contains more water? The child's answer will definitely be towards the elongated glass. So this is, this is what I mean to say, they are not capable of conservation or mental manipulation of objects. Next, the third stage, that is the concrete operational stage, which is from 7 to 11 years old. More frequent and more accurate use of logical transformation and operation, the child can think more logically about physical activity. For instance, the children of this stage, they learn to appreciate magic because that's something that's not supposed to happen easily. And, uh, for example, you may ask, you may, let's give two, two bowls of apple in front of the child, and then you ask the child, which box contains more apples? The child's answer will definitely be towards the box which contains more apples. So in this stage, the child can think more logically about physical reality. That is the concrete operational stage. And last but not least, we have the formal operational stage that is from 12 and 12 years and above. Here the child has uh, has the ability of abstract reasoning, scientific reasoning, metacognition, ability to reflect upon one thinking. Okay, for example, what would the world look like without light? What would this density look like without the insulting teachers? Because we are very noisy, we are very talkative, we are very active as well. So this is this is about the formal operational stage. Here we can think. We can think properly. We can think like an adult. We can we can we can understand we can understand what 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 the what the person would think if he if he just say if he comment on his clothes, if he comment on his spectacles or whatever. Okay, this is the formal operational stage. And uh, next, the most important one is application of Piaget's theory to the classroom. How we can apply Piaget's theory in the classroom? So discovery learning. Children learn best through doing and actively exploring. Focus on the process of learning, not the end product of it. This is what Piaget suggested. Use active methods you know, that require rediscovering or reconstructing truths use both collaborative and individual activities so they can learn from each other. Like, like we can group students together, like give them a topic, and let them explore it with equilibrium in the child. Evaluate the level of the child's development so suitable tasks can be provided. Because each child is different from one another, right? We have studied about individual differences, right? So this, this can be, this, this is relatable to individual differences. So we can evaluate the level of the child's development. Accordingly, we can facilitate it as a teacher. And last but not least, the role of the teacher is to facilitate learning and not to direct it. And uh, last but not least, to conclude, I would like to uh, <coughs> I would like to highlight about Piaget's, Piaget's, Piaget's how 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 influential Piaget was. Okay? The influence of Piaget's ideas in developmental psychology has been enormous. He changed how people view the child's role as a method of studying children. He was an inspiration to many. Okay. Piaget was one of the first psychologists to make a systematic study of cognitive development. His ideas have been of practical use in understanding and communicating with children, particularly in the field of education. Piaget's theory has been applied across education. <coughs> According to Piaget's theory, educational programs should be designed to correspond to the stages of development. That's why there are four stages of development. Last. Last but not the least, I would, uh, this is one of the famous lines from Japan, John Fajet, that is when you teach a child something, you take away forever his chance of discovering it for himself. This is the famous line of John Fajet. Next slide. 
understand for bibliography if you all want to refer then you may refer to your method material me am singlo group ama dei group ama de share to me ro ko adu ko he na mo na ka ka na bol lakani i think uh, education is the means for change natra na change ne ba ko na adu tar di paniya ma change sarong bani na khali another change ama ko so bil so tham bagi mo ta natra na so and then i also learn many new things from this presentation also uh, one of the word that was mentioned by meta cognition Mm, uh, I find this word. This metacognition is nothing but this is a uh, the, the capacity to.